Oh, that practice swing feels so good. Man, I can't wait to hit the ball. How come I can't repeat my practice swing? Sound familiar? Stay with us. So yeah, all kidding aside, obviously it may not look that bad, but it does feel very different for the vast majority of you. And that is really simple. When you're doing a practice swing, everything feels very frictionless because we have nothing to hit. Now, the practice swings are even better if they're in relation to a target. So I'm swinging through to a target and I'm getting ready to deliver a shot to the target. You'll see Tiger Woods perform his practice swings always in relation to the flight plan that he has into the, into the target. And then you go to the ball and you can no longer see a target. All you see is a ball. So now your move is towards a golf ball. That's the end of the road. How can the swing be the same? It is absolutely impossible. So let us give you some very, very precise references so that you can place the ball in the middle of your practice swing and have the ball be a precise intersection on the way to the target. Because, hey, this is very light. It can't stop your swing but it's stopping you mentally, isn't it? So let's get rid of all that riffraff and let's get down to business. Most of you don't even know where the club is passing when you're making a practice swing. So when you do make a practice swing, pay attention to where the club is passing. I can see the blur of my club passing right there. So then you bring that over to the ball. Here's drill number one. Make a practice swing above the ball and towards a specific item. So we're going to swing above the ball and observe the blur and make sure that the blur of the club is moving through the ball and a very specific intermediate point that you checked out from back there. Then when you lower the club to the ground, you see this blur in your mind and you're gonna let the practice swing follow that blur in that direction. And then, did I stay with that? Yes, I did. I, I saw that nice blur and lo and behold, there's the ball sitting right next to the flag stick. And you probably didn't see much of a difference between my practice swing and my regular swing because I had the prediction that the ball was in the way of this blur going in that direction. Now, let's look at a couple of other items that would prevent you from doing said practice swing. If your grip club relationship is too open. So let's say my club face is way too open. For most of you who have a neutral grip and a square face, you don't realize, if I put this in a baseball swing, that when my hands come through first, that's foul ball. The ball's just gonna glance off the face into oblivion. So if your grip is too weak or too neutral and you're trying to swing toward the target, you'll miss. And your brain knows that this ball is gonna go to the right. So what does it do? It tries to right the ship. Now you have to interfere. You gotta interfere, you gotta put some tension in there and you gotta do some body English just to save the shot. You just canceled your practice swing. So make sure that your grip club relationship is strong enough. You see how that club face is nice and closed? When my hands move forward, now my club is square. So when I let the swing move in that direction, you can do a little Goldilocks to start. You say, okay, I'm gonna close this way too much. See how I have it way too closed? And I'm going to follow the blur in that direction no matter what, and let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Yes, I followed the blur beautifully. The ball started and then, whoa, it's got way too much curve to the left. I predicted that for myself, but for most of you, when you close it that way, you'll be surprised. The ball's going pretty straight, okay? So if my face is too open, I'm going to go neutral grip, 
and then I'm going to let momentum follow that arc blur in that direction. Here we go. Ah, now the ball starts off to the right and doesn't come back. Now I'm in that right bunker and I've got less distance. Whereas before I was carrying it about 180 yards, now I'm at 170 yards. But I did stay with it. So the key now is to stay in the direction that you want to send the ball. And then you make the prediction with your grip club relationship, hey, is the ball going to follow? That's going to be one less thing that you'll have to fix midway through the swing so that you can actually repeat your practice swing. Another thing that's going to prevent you from doing that is if your distance to ball is off. So how do we find the distance to ball? Well, you'll notice that when you're swinging in your practice swing, your distance to ball is very specific. It's passing right there. I saw it. But then when I go to the ball, I say, okay, I got to make sure I don't miss the ball. Watch where the club passes now. Oh boy. Well, I just hit it fat. I shanked. I had to pull across it to come back this way. So I pulled it and I sliced it. I just opened up a big can of worms only because I didn't stay with my practice swing. I didn't stay in the direction that I wanted to go. So from there, if I let it go to the target now, watch what happens. Oh, look at that. Solid contact. So notice there's the ball on the green and that was, my gosh, that was absolutely pummeled. That's my blade seven iron. Now I'm a 187 carry with my blade seven iron. So when I'm through the ball into the target with a closed enough face, that's about 30 yards longer than if I was at the ball with a neutral face. So distance to ball has to be, yes, when I make a nice practice swing, it's passing there. I better make the same swing through that intermediate point if I want to have that solid contact. So that should motivate you to keep your practice swing going through and out and in that direction. How about ball position? Well, if your ball's too far back, you got to reach back to go fetch it. If it's too far forward, you got to reach forward to go fetch it. But if it's in the right position, you can let the same practice swing happen. So, one, we need a target. Two, we need an intermediate point. This is non-negotiable. Three, we need a setup that matches letting the practice swing move through and in that direction, seeing that blur. Now, I'm all set and I can actually let the practice swing happen. Isn't that wonderful now? That should explain a lot of things. For way more information on this, you want to go to wisdomandgolfpremium.com. In that website, when you register, you're going to go in the coupon code, you're going to go WISDOM10, all in caps, and the number 10, and you'll get your first month for free on us, okay? really important. And then you'll realize, oh my gosh, this wealth of information that we have in here to help you get rid of that riffraff. So instead of chasing your tail, wondering why you're not repeating your practice swing, you're going to get down to business and you're going to execute tasks. And then you're going to find your way through that rabbit hole into wonderland. And then you'll go, wow, I can actually repeat my practice swing now. All the best.